Very good morning, uh, children. Welcome back to SBR online classes. Myself, Komala Patil, uh, would like to continue with the yesterday's lesson. So, before starting the lesson, just want to remind you of a very important day today. That is National Pollution Control Day. Day today. So, second uh, of December is celebrated as Pollution Free National Pollution Control Day. So, all of you know what is pollution. It is the unwanted, which is not wanted in the environment in the different forms in water, air. So nowadays, because of industrialization, because of use of lot of chemicals, fertilizers, uh, even the air is polluted, water is polluted. So you have different types of pollutions all over the earth. So even air also, environment around earth is also being polluted. So that is causing a very, uh, uh, that is causing a very damaging concern to all the living organisms not only human beings even the animals plant all the living creatures are facing the problem which live in water which live in air understood so in, in the soil so you have lot of uh, destruction going on on earth because of industrialization or uh, more of uh, we are making more causing damage to the environment which is in turn damaging ourselves so Nowadays, cleanliness is also going on. So day by day, step by step, we are moving towards a pollution free. But we have to work very hard. To, it is not easy. So one by one, we have to see that our earth is not affected. Understood? And uh, so what is that? So pollution day is celebrated today. So that uh, we have to see that we have to control all the pollutions which is going on around us so so today we'll pledge we'll bake at least around you wherever you are see that your environment is clean and which is causing a great great concern to even our health also so see that uh, maintain a healthy lifestyle or the environment also you have to take care of the environment which you are living in so we'll pledge that how much ever we uh, can keep our environment clean understood and see that our environment is pollution free so this is all about uh, today's national pollution control day so try to and uh, for science i want an activity i want you all in one of the homework i'll give you i'll give you as an activity in your homework so on this day, National Pollution Control Day, I want some 10 lines for you to write in your homework book. Okay, 10 lines, at least 10 lines and what you are pledging, what you pledge, what you are taking step, your own ideas, how you can control, how you can bring the pollution which is going on around you, how you will control that pollution. What are your new innovative steps? So you have to think of new uh, techniques so that you can keep your pollution whatever uh, your environment clean pollution free so at least 10 points i want not more at least 10 points on this national pollution control day okay children okay now uh, we will go back to the lesson yesterday is about light shadows and reflection so what we were talking about yesterday well just a recap of the lesson what we uh, talked about yesterday we talked about uh, light. So, light is a form of energy and we have talked about different forms of energy. Just uh, told you the names of different forms of energy. So, that it can be wind, solar energy, chemical energy, mechanical energy and the different forms of energy, different kinds of energy you will be going to learn in the higher classes. So, just you, you should know that there are different forms of energy like uh, heat energy, electrical energy, mechanical energy. Understood? So, in that you have light energy. So you are going to learn something about light. So how this light, uh, what, how does it help us? So light, I told you yesterday, it helps us to see the things. So without light, we cannot see anything. And I've told you the example uh, during, it can be any source of light. It can be natural source of light. I told you two types of sources are there. One is natural source, another one is artificial source. Just a reminder, what we have studied yesterday, natural artificial so what is natural sources of light 
So this is a form of energy. Light is a form of energy. So in that there are two types. So one is natural, one is artificial. So what are natural uh, natural sources of light? What is the source? Source is from where we get. Okay, what is that? Source means from where we get whatever we are talking about. So we are talking about light now. Now uh, where do we get from? There are two forms. One is natural source. Another one is artificial. What is natural source? The things, the bodies which give out light, they are already present in the nature. The things which are in nature like sun, I've told you, uh, some of the stars and then if you take uh, glow worms, lightning, these all are the things which you get in nature already. So they are naturally light emitting bodies. Okay. So they are considered as natural sources of light. Artificial sources are nothing. They resemble the natural source, but they are man-made. So we are making those things and then seeing that they give us light. So what are those artificial sources of light? You can take your torch. Torch has a bulb inside, bulb. And then uh, you have tube lights, different, different sources. Nowadays, due to the advanced technology and all, you have different types of sources of light. You have laser lights. And then you have tube lights, tube lights, laser lights, and all different different new forms of energy uh, uh, light giving sources. So those will be considered under artificial sources. And then uh, I've told you how you see the things in front of you. Though we have eyes, I've told you, uh, but light is very much necessary. When light falls on any object, then it reflects back to our eyes. And I've told you three eyes source of light and then eyes and brain light and then eyes then brain so these play a very important role for us to make the things visible so light is already necessary then light should fall on any object and then it reflects back to our eyes then our eyes forms the images and then it senses to the brain, sends the messages within a fraction of a second, then we will identify the object which is right of us. So these three will help us to see the things. Though we have eyes, but light is very much necessary to make any things visible. Understood? So these are the three things which will make us to see. And then we have talked about luminous bodies and non-luminous bodies. What are luminous and non-luminous bodies? So luminous bodies are those bodies or objects which emit light of their own. Understood? It can be artificial source or it can be natural source. They will give the light of their own. And non-luminous bodies are the objects which do not give light of their own. Uh, we can take the chair. This example we can give it as sun. And then with this we can give it as chain. Uh, then we can give moon. And some of the planets, they do not have, they do not give their light of their own. Understood? They take the light from the luminous bodies. They take the light from the luminous bodies and then they bounce it back or they reflect back to our eyes. Then we will see that object. So once the light falls on those non-luminous bodies which are not giving light and that some part, some is absorbed, some light is absorbed, some light is given off. Bounce back. How you have the bouncing ball? When you throw the bouncing ball, it comes back to you. In the same way, light falls on any object and it again comes back to you. It enters into our eyes, forms the images, then we will see that object. And that's what we see as the moon is shining there. Moon is giving out a light like sun, but actually it doesn't give out light of its own. It takes the light of the sun, it throws back to the earth and we receive the light to our eyes and then we uh, what is that? We judge it as a moon. Then our brain works. We find it that moon as a image. Then we'll understand. So light doesn't, moon doesn't have light of its own. It takes the light from the sun. So those are called as non-luminous. Even the planets also. Some of the planets we can see. It's the same way as the moon takes the light from the sun. Even the, it doesn't, it falls. When the light falls from the sun on the planets, then it, it comes back to us and then we will see those planets which are shining in the sky. Okay. So we don't see all the planets. We see some of the planets in the sky. So this is about luminous and non-luminous bodies. Yesterday we have studied. Now yesterday we have talked about uh, three types of materials. 
what are those transparent translucent and opaque just in short transparent translucent and then opaque so these three are uh, differentiated on how the they will act when the light falls on them so how they are different from one another they will uh, how the mode of transfer of light happens in all these three materials whether it allows light whether it will not allow light or whether it will allow partially so it depends upon how the light travels in all these three materials so what are those transparent materials transparent materials are those materials wherein light it allows the light to pass through them okay i have given you the example of glass your spectacles the glass which is used in your specs and then uh, air water clear water also can be considered as transparent we can see through those things and then window panes some of the window panes are there wherein you can see what is there on the other side understood so these all are considered under transparent materials and the next translucent materials what are those translucent materials are those materials wherein light passes through but partially not all of the light passes some of the light passes and some is reflected back it will not allow how it uh, transparent allows everything but translucent will allow partially not fully okay you can take the examples of butter paper tracing paper frosted glass some of the window panes are attached with the frosted glass so that you can just see the dim figures the other side okay uh, just uh, what is that clear images won't be there blurred images you will see and you can have curtain sometimes you can see the curtains also so curtains will be very thin understood they will be they will not be fully transparent they will be translucent just a dim you can see the other side and then they will have butter paper oil paper tracing paper which you use to trace the maps or any drawings so those all are considered under translucent materials here what happens Tra light enters and some is reflected back not in transparent material light enters into the objects but in translucent it doesn't happen like that okay now next is opaque what are these opaque materials opaque materials are those materials where it will not allow the light to pass through them okay you can take the uh, examples of your cardboard wood okay and uh, anything which will not allow the light to pass through them it will offset this all the it, light which falls on them either it reflects back or it is absorbed so those are considered under opaque world so yesterday we have learned it now then the next part we have studied is about shadows so i have told you about some shadows what is a shadow how shadow is formed we have and two three activities are there to find out what is a shadow just to see the formation of shadow okay now what is a shadow shadow is the dark area or the shady area which is formed when in any opaque object comes in the path of source of light any source of light any opaque object when it comes in the path of source of light okay when it comes this is opaque object you can take your book whatever it is when any opaque objects comes in the light travels always i'll tell you the characteristic of light light always travels in a straight line so when light travels when any opaque object comes in the path of light then it gets obstructed and this image of this object falls the opposite of the source of light and the dark area nerulu we say in kannada so whatever whatever the shape of that object is there in front of the source of light that falls on the opposite side the dark shady area okay that is called as shadow now it is it will be always in the opposite side so yesterday we have learned about uh, one activity there activity 2 what is that activity 2 we have told uh, you can take any object go in the ground or a, a in sunny on a sunny day a ground take any object keep just above the ground level and when the sunlight falls you can see the object in the figure 11.2 i have told you hold the textbook in front of you you can see the pictures there okay now you can even draw the outline of the shadow there one of you can hold 
the other friend of you can draw the outline so these shadows will give us the uh, type of object what you are having sometimes they will mislead they will not give you the exact uh, whatever the things you are holding they will just tell you the help you to identify the object but sometimes they will mislead because you will have only the shape of the object what you are holding and they will not be uh, they will just tell you what object you are holding so you can take there is an activity that you can take any objects hold in front of any source of light then you will find the shadows there you can draw the outline of those different shapes of the objects what you are holding so this is one activity for you all and another activity what we have done yesterday was activity 3 so what is that activity 3 some of your friend uh, it is done in dark okay uh, you need a cardboard you need a torch then go in the open ground and then on the torch and it should uh, fall the light of the torch should fall on one of your friend so this is a one uh, picture there so this is done in the dark you have in the figure 11.3 so hold the torch on it it should face upwards and the light of the torch should fall on the face of your friend and then when it falls can you now it is dark i've told can you find the shadows behind no understood you cannot find the shadow behind if there is a building or a tree or any object behind then the face of that person will fall okay don't think that nothing is there means there is no shadow so what you need what you'll understand by this now you ask your friend we have taken one cardboard sheet also with us so take that cardboard sheet just hold it behind that person and the boy's face will fall on the shadow of that will fall on this cardboard what we have taken so what you'll understand by this a shadow always needs a screen the screen can be anything wherever it falls suppose we are walking in the sun there our shadow falls on the ground understood sometimes the shadow falls on the buildings sometimes the shadows of the trees are formed in the water if the water is next to a mountain or a tree understood so shadows uh, that is reflection whatever you are talking in water that is reflection but a shadow always requires a screen it can be a cardboard it can be ground whatever it is so you can clearly see the shadows there don't think that if nothing is there no shadows are formed but shadows can be caught on the screen so screen is very much necessary now for shadow what they require you require a source of light okay you require a source of light and then you require opaque object and then you require a screen so these three things are very much necessary for the formation of the shadow okay now next we'll move on i think and one more thing i want to just tell you here okay children see now uh, whenever current goes nowadays all are having inverters and all immediately as soon as current it will be on so before and all, when we were small, what we used to do? When candle is, when we used to on the can, uh, I mean light up the candle in our room, till the current comes, we used to play on the, uh, we used to make shapes like animals and which used to fall on the wall. I think you might have uh, done that. Try to do that. Understood? So if when candle is to be there in the room and we used to make the shapes of animals like deer, then cat. Can you see in the textbook you have those animals which are hidden? So make the shapes with your hand and that will look like animal there actually when you see like this it will not look but the shadows will have those pictures of eagle see they have made it like a dog and then a eagle like camel cat so these shadows can be clearly seen on the wall of your room okay so uh, this is about uh, shadows and shadows will not you cannot see the shadows in the dark but if light source is there, if you have a screen, you can see the shadow. And next, uh, I want to tell you about the color of the shadows. Okay. Can you find the colors? So, you have different colors now. We are going with different colored dresses and all shadows. Are, are shadows colored? No. So, shadows are not colored. You get it in black itself. It is a dark area. Already we have told. What are shadows? They are the dark area or the shady area which is formed on the ground or whatever screen you hold it okay and they are not colored no color it is no colors of the shadows and one more thing shadows can be 
bigger bigger smaller understood so it depends upon what time or what day you are so in the morning it will be longer and as it passes in the afternoon it will be shortest again as the day passes it will start becoming bigger and bigger so as you walk in the sun it becomes smaller so size also changes during the day so these are uh some of the characteristics of shadows so they become what i have told was their shadows are erect means what they are on the same side side does not changes so they become smaller or bigger that is there so they are not inverted or they are not they are erect or they are of the same side and then uh, they are real they are whatever it is just you have the shape but they are real and then they can be smaller or equal or they can be bigger and then they they are, i have told you in the morning they'll be bigger as it goes in the afternoon again they become shortest and again as evening uh, big uh, as it starts to set in the evening then again it becomes bigger and bigger and then uh, so these are some of the characteristics and they are what i have told they are not colored so these are the characteristics some same side then they are smaller or equal or bigger in size okay no colors they are dark area no colors same side and they are real okay so they are real though they are not giving us the exact picture but they are real understood and they are smaller equal or bigger in size okay now next we we'll go for activity 4 so there is one activity 4 uh, what is that activity just it is done you can do it in your house also so you can place a chair on the ground on a sunny day and see the shadow of that chair so chair is having all four legs it is three dimensional isn't it so can you see the full three dimensional shadow there okay keep that chair in on the ground in the sun and then observe uh, can you get the exact picture of the chair in the shadow just move on the chair and see what changes you find when you move the chair what type of shadow whether it is becoming bigger whether you are seeing all the all the legs of the chair you can observe the different uh, changes in the shadow there okay now next you can even take a box what have you can take a box like this and you can take a book okay now this this book is a three dimensional thing isn't it it is a three dimensional the difference between this and this this is a three dimensional and this is a plane okay so it is width is there but sometimes if i take a single cardboard uh, take this and observe the shape of the shadow there observe the difference between these two whether you have a three dimensional figure in the shadow or whether you whether this and this will look same and one change in the direction of the rectangular box and the book which you are holding in the sun whether it changes or whether you uh, you have the different uh, shadows for both okay now in the activity 4 uh, just i'll tell you about the do you get the accurate picture of the shape of the chair or do you get the accurate picture of the uh, three dimensional uh, rectangular box and the book you have to just uh, do it and just see it and the next uh, one more uh, activity about the shadow is you can take the colors different colored flowers or different colored objects also and then just observe the shadows of all these uh, uh, colored or non colored can you see the colored flowers red rose if i take red rose will it the shadow look red there or yellow there no so i have told you before also there are no colors in the shadows you have just the shape of the object what you are holding so there you don't find any different colors in the shadows okay uh, now uh, i have told you we'll go for the next uh, topic of this lesson that is we'll create a small camera there what this camera is about what does it help us to find out and you have to do this activity and simple things you require so what are those we'll do it a pin hole camera what is that a pin hole camera now children now we have studied about light 
and then we have finished about shadows now we'll prepare we'll do a activity with your cardboard box that is about a pinhole camera what you are going to see in this pinhole camera how you are preparing okay now uh, this is something different from your shadows so afterwards we we'll learn about the differences between the shadows and the pinhole camera images so image is when you stand in front of the mirror you see your own image shadows are what they are formed when the sunlight falls on you it is the dark area and the image image of the tree in the uh, pond which is next to it you find the image isn't it so this is the difference so shadow is different image is different now uh, we'll do a pinhole camera with the cardboard box and what are the images formed how are the images different from the shadow so for this you need a cardboard box like this a rectangular cardboard box and then cut open one part of it and children 11.5 you have the how to prepare that also is given there okay then you have a rectangular box like this and you have and you have to this part should be same as it is like this okay and this should be open and here you have to make a hole small hole here on the other part this is the larger box and this is the whenever i say this is the larger box and this is the smaller box okay now on the larger box make a small hole there okay and then you have another box which is the smaller box so this is all same cut open one side and the other side of the box you have to cut a small square uh part of the one part of that smaller box small square there huh? and on that i have stuck already children just see i have stuck a tracing paper over that small square see can you see from here inside so small square and on that square you have to paste a tracing paper you have to paste a tracing paper and then how these two box should be okay that is very much important children how these exactly it should fit children you should not find any gap there exactly it should fit into it okay you should not find any gap in between these two boxes though i have i have made, uh, there is some gap in my boxes but you don't uh, find some boxes wherein there is no gap between these two boxes exactly it should fit inside and the tracing paper whatever is there it should fit into this box and then one of seeing that like this you have to adjust the smaller box inside and then point out towards the sun or in the sunny day or wherever light is there and you can see the objects like trees okay whatever some trees or buildings like that so light enters into this hole okay light enters into the hole of the larger box and then it falls on the tracing paper here it falls on the tracing paper and then you can view it like this you can see the image of the tree or whatever it is there on the tracing paper so this is about the pinhole camera can you see there in figure 11.5 can you see there okay the first box a first larger box they have made a small hole and the second one they have made a small square and then you have to fit both and then you go on adjusting the second smaller box and then you can see the images like trees and all and how the images will be when images which fall on the tracing paper so they will be inverted okay they will be inverted because light travels in a straight line suppose now so this is your larger box okay and this is your larger box so you are making the hole there hole there okay and another another smaller box which you are fitting inside so you are making a small square there you are cutting cut, cut open this small square and on that part you are sticking the tracing paper over that and then you are fixing this into this box okay you are fixing that into this larger box then what happens when you view this if you are seeing the tree here okay 
and then tree when light falls on this tree i'm telling you go it in uh, daylight when in a sunny day so what happens always light travels in a straight light falls on this tree and then again it moves into this into the hole okay light travels always in the straight line so both these light so light from the top comes here and the light again comes from here it falls here then again it enters into this tracing paper it enters into the tracing paper and this falls down okay we we'll call it as x x1 y okay fiber and those inverted images this falls the upper part of the tree falls down because it's always light travels on a light travels in a straight line again this also will be moving this so this falls up so you have an inverted image on your trans translucent paper or the tracing paper which you have stuck on the smaller box okay now this is pinhole cameras are you we used to if you put a photographic uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, film there you can get the photographs of those inverted images so pahele in this lesson tells so she is getting the inverted images here she is getting the inverted images because light travels in a straight line it will not say i ah uh, now i am going into the hole i'll fall here itself no it is always traveling in a straight line so it is also traveling in a straight line okay so these images which are formed on the trans these are called as pinhole uh, camera images so the difference between these pinhole camera images are uh, in shadows they are on the same side and pinhole cameras they are inverted and here you have colored uh, pictures they so images of shadow and then pinhole camera images so how are the images different from one another these are uh, what is that inward these are same side erect same side they are inverted they are dark and they are colored okay children so these are some of the differences between the shadows and images to view the trees which are nearby in distant uh, places you can see the images of the trees just you can do it and observe the images or in uh, in this pinhole camera even you can take a cardboard make a hole inside face it towards the sun you can find the image of the sun falling on the another screen which you have kept it down okay they do this okay so this is one type of uh, finding the for, uh, forming the images making a hole in the cardboard and then uh, next we'll go for the natural pinhole cameras what is a natural pinhole cameras these natural pinhole cameras uh, whenever a tree thick tree which is covered with the leaves okay big, big branches are there and the tree is full of leaves and in the sunshine when the sun shines on the tree and when you go be below the tree or when you go uh, below the tree you can find some patches there of the sun here and there so those the sun is trying to enter into the leaves of the uh, leaves of those trees and that colored patch what is that light falls on the ground so these leaves act like pinholes and whatever images you get on the ground those are called as pinhole images they are, they will be circular so sun is trying to enter into these leaves and leaves act how we have made a small hole in your larger this box in the same way light tries to enter into those gaps of those leaves so you have some gaps between some leaves isn't it so those leaves gaps in those leaves act like pinholes and through that light enters and falls on the ground and you can find some circular shape of the a uh, sunlight round circular shapes you find on the ground so this is called as natural can you find there uh, so in figure 11.6 can you find that natural pinhole camera so this is sun under a tree you can find small small gaps circular uh, images which are nothing but the pinhole images of the sun those are the images of the sun which are moving into the gaps of the leaves and then falling on the ground and this pinhole camera if you take a smaller box if the if you take it smaller what happens more of light enters into smaller box smaller hole and then you get a sharp image 
if the box is bigger so more of uh, light enters into it and you will get a blurred image okay this is one thing when you are doing the pinhole cameras okay now next uh, even when eclipse occurs that also they will take the cardboard they'll make a hole and they'll make the sun you cannot see directly when the eclipse is going on so you can take a cardboard make a hole and just hold it like that and then when it falls on that cardboard image is formed on the screen there so you cannot directly look whenever eclipse is going on you cannot directly look into it so it is very harmful for your eyes so even you can do it with a cardboard and then with a hole in it facing it towards that side not you should not see then facing it like this towards the sun and the image falls okay now so the difference you have understood about the pinhole images ah, now i have told you pinhole images are inverted now when you find the sun's image in the pinhole which is uh, done on the trees or which comes through the trees through the gaps of the leaves do you find the upside down of the sun no okay you just find the circular shapes of the sun so this is about the pinhole camera and try to do it try to do this and just watch the trees which are there try to do it just i'll show you once again this a larger box and then this one should be open this side and then you have a small hole okay take a large smaller box which fits directly exactly with no gaps in between no gaps at the side no you should not have any gaps inside and the second box how it is it is cut open on one side and then on one part make a small circular cut there sorry square cut small and then put a tracing paper on that stick it and then fit this inside the larger box and then go on adjusting it like this okay then you can see the images inside the light enters into the pin hole which you have made here and then there it coincides light two straight lines light coming light travels in a straight line it coincides in that hole understood the upside image will, will be down that you are going to learn in the higher classes and then again you have two images and that falls on the tracing paper then you can see the images on your trans, uh, translucent paper which you have we have done in the smaller box so this is about the pin hole uh, images which you find and this is natural pin hole which you find under the uh, tree which is there near the sun understood so next we'll go for the activity 6 what is this activity 6 this is one of the characteristic of light so what what is the important characteristic of light so that we are going to learn what is that which makes it important what, what is that a uh, important characteristic of light so light always travels in straight line what is that important principle light travels in straight how do you say that light travels in a straight line simply we cannot say light travels in straight line can you say can you say simply no, light travels in a straight line you have to have something in theory for that So you have to have some how to you have to prove it, isn't it? Light travels in a straight line. So this is done. The small activity for you all. So what is that activity? You can take a pipe. Okay, see. Can you see this? You can take a pipe, straight pipe. Okay, in one room and place a candle on the table and look through the pipe. look through the pipe to the flame of the candle okay just straight like this the level also should be same look into it you can see the flame isn't it now you can see the flame of the candle next take a bent tube okay you can take the bent tube like this and then how you are standing for the first say stand same way and then observe the flame of the candle now can you observe can you observe that flame there no because when light travels in a straight line it will not say ah, the tube is bent i'll go like this i'll enter like this and make him visible no light always travels in a straight line it will not bend understood so if you are taking a bent tube like this light will not it gets obstructed there it will say i'll stop here i will not enter i will not bend 
you have to make it straight so light always travels in a straight line so this make uh, proves that light travels in a straight line and one more uh, experiment also tells you how light travels in a straight line suppose take three cardboards this is there for your second to standard just i tell you take three cardboards fix it there and make three holes at the same distance all the three holes should be at the same distance okay place a candle over here place a candle then what happens okay now you can view from here okay you can view from here now you can see the candle there okay you can see the candle okay try to see all the holes should be at the same length same equal length then you can see and distance also same and the places also should be same now you can view the flame of the candle suppose now this is a that would be and then c now the next step what i am going to do i am just moving this aside okay i am moving this cardboard aside now all the holes are in the same path isn't it now suppose if i move the cardboard b something like this if i move this cardboard down now what happens children what happens now now light is entering and hole comes down and the light stops here itself now you have a cardboard which is opaque what are opaque objects which will not allow light to pass through them understood now the hole has come down light stops here itself it will not and it will not go unless you bring the hole in the same path of those two holes which are there on the cardboard a and cardboard c now you cannot see the flame what we will understand by this light or it will not say ah i will go like this okay i look it's not like that ha huh? so light will not bend always light travels in a straight line so this is another principle wherein you can understand that light travels in a straight line so your activity 11.7 is clearly telling you by showing you the pipe with the straight pipe and a bent pipe so this is all about how light travels in a straight line and the same way pinhole cameras also i have told you so images from the trees whatever you are seeing through the pinhole cameras so those images when light falls on those trees and it comes straight into the hole and image light from the top and light from the below understood they will travel in a straight line and they coincide near the point where you have pointed made a small point there and then again they travel inside and the upside image will be down and the whichever is down light that comes on the top so that's why you have the inverted images on the translucent paper understood so try to do these pinhole cameras you can find some so you you have you need to do those activities understood now in this chapter you have got an opportunity to do this pinhole camera i want everybody to do that and try to see the view the images using the pinhole cameras so in today's part so we have dealt with uh, shadows and then we have dealt about the pinhole cameras characteristics of shadows pinhole cam images of the uh, pinhole camera images and then we have studied a very important characteristic of light that is light travels in a straight line so we have done two activities for that one is with the pipe using the pipe will prove it that light travels only in a straight line it will not bend and one more we have done extra uh, activity is that with the cardboard keeping the cardboard one after the other then keeping the candle in front of that and just view next what you do just replace the second cardboard and then what happens the candle light comes from the first cardboard and then second it gets obstructed it is not going because you have tilted that you have moved the second cardboard this side and the second cardboard it stops it it stops it there itself then we cannot see the flame that shows light travels in a straight line so tomorrow we will deal with the last part of the lesson that is mirrors and reflections what are mirrors and then 
uh, what is the meaning of reflection what are the characteristics of all those reflections which are falling so next tomorrow we'll deal with it okay children so today just go through the lesson whatever i have taught try to do that activity of the pinhole camera okay children have a good day children